comparative advantage was first introduced by the 19th century economist David Ricardo and emphasizes differences in countries' resources and productivity levels. To understand comparative advantage, consider Pakistan and Sweden. Unlike warm Pakistan, Sweden could not produce rice or grow mangoes without costly greenhouses. But Sweden's forests and iron make it relatively less costly for Sweden to produce paper and steel products. Since both countries want to consume all products, the most efficient production scheme would be for Sweden to produce and export steel and paper and for Pakistan to produce and export rice and mangoes. This is known as inter-industry trade. So a nation should export the goods for which it enjoys a comparative advantage and should import goods that would be relatively costly for the country to produce. But what do we really mean by a country's comparative advantage? Even though a country may have a disadvantage in producing any single good with respect to another country, in at least one commodity, it will have a relative advantage. For a country to have a comparative advantage in the production of a good, it must be able to produce that good at a lower opportunity cost relative to another country. The opportunity cost is the foregone opportunity to produce some other good. The opportunity cost of a CD is what you would have been able to do with the $10 had you not spent it on a CD. So the cost of a CD is not being able to go out to dinner. It's not being able to buy a shirt. Suppose an American worker can produce 10 pairs of jeans or 20 cars per day, while a Chinese worker can only produce 6 pairs of jeans or 6 cars per day. Clearly, an American worker is more productive overall. But in terms of comparative advantage, the Chinese worker is relatively more productive in producing jeans than the American worker as the opportunity cost of producing a pair of jeans in China is only one car, while the corresponding opportunity cost in the US is two cars. It would therefore be cost efficient if the US produced automobiles and China produced jeans. Economists Eli Heckscher